inspiration and just some motivation to keep you going during this time. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter what your job is, what your background is, what size your church is, what size your business is, we all have been sent home. And so what are we doing during this time when we're home? What are we, what are we working on? How are we keeping ourselves focused? And so I've invited some friends to join me today to really just share with you what they're doing, the things that they would recommend for you to be doing, and just to encourage you today. And so I want to start off just having them share a little bit about themselves, and then we'll jump right in. And Nicole, I'm going to have you start off. Hey, everybody. I'm Nicole Donaldson, um, usually known as Family Fit Mom on all social media platforms. I've been a personal trainer for um, over 15 years, and I have a heart for um, making sure families are healthy, not just physically, but um, in their faith as well and in their connection with each other. So, um, of course, I'm not working. My gym is closed now. Um, so I've had to adapt like a lot of people. So I'm really um, enjoying being home and learning new ways to um, get those new people who haven't done anything fitness related up and moving and then getting those um, seasoned professionals who work out all the time, keeping them motivated to keep moving on and um, also talking about health and wellness as well. So I love um, fitness and I think now's a great time to work on all of it together. So I'm excited about sharing how we can all continue to do that during this time. Great, great. Thank you, Nicole. Adonis, will you share a little bit yeah. about yourself? Yes. Yes, yes, Adonis Lindsay here, guys. I. Um, been living here in Nashville for since 2005. Met my wife here. We have two amazing children. My wife's name is Heather. Uh, my children are Grayson and Carrington. So uh, today we happen to all be in the house together. Uh, <laughs> but they're in a separate room and you, you ladies know how that is right now. Uh, so I'm an author, speaker, podcaster. Uh, a lot of my background, I've been in ministry for the past 20 years. So I love uh, ministering to all types of people, no matter if you're in a church world, business world, uh, educational world with students. Uh, my main drive is to help you take those next steps to get closer uh, to the dreams and goals that you have in life. And a lot of it too is dealing with your mindset. So I, I work a lot with just helping you stay in the right mindset. And during this season that we're all in right now, uh, the quarantine, the stay at home, uh, business is shut down. Uh, hey, you've got to keep that mind right, okay? Nothing else will work for you if you're not keeping the mind right. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about that today. Great, great, great. And last but not least, Tamara, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Yolanda. My name is Tamara Fike, and I'm with Love in a Big World, and we provide character education, social and emotional learning resources for children, families, schools, and communities. So all of that aligns with mental health and wellness. Great. Awesome. Tamara, thank, thank you for joining us. And it's so critical, especially with families at home with children, really not just looking at the academic issues or concerns that they may have or challenges they may have. How are your children doing socially and emotionally during this time? So, so Tamara, I want you to start off really sharing with us, what are you seeing or what are you hearing from educators? How are they coping? We, sometimes we forget about the teachers yeah. that were in a classroom with our kids, but we remember when our kids are at home, you're thinking, oh, this is what they dealt with all day long with 30 children <laughs> or 25 mm -hmm. children. So, so what are you hearing from educators? And, and then just share your thoughts on what, we can be doing for young people and what you guys are doing. Okay. So I'm hearing lots of different things from educators and it really depends on location. Um, so the educators are very concerned about meeting the needs of their kids when it comes to academics, as well as their social emotional needs and their physical needs. Because for a large percentage of our population, when school's not in session, they may not be eating well if at all. Yeah. So the, the concern ranges. Um, there's a lot of, depending on who I talk to and what their role is in education, there are some of us uh, who are very excited about the changes that are occurring yeah. uh, because education as it's been has not served us well. I mean, if we're really honest, the system is a flawed system. And, and there have been 
conversations for the last five to 10 years about what needs to happen as far as actually the collapse of the system as we know it and the rebuilding of the system and how can we better serve more equitably uh, everyone and prepare everyone for the jobs at hand. Because if you look at the history of the educational system, it's actually set up as an institution and it's set up to put people to work in factories. That's not where we live right now. So the idea that most of us are working in the gig economy or we're, we're working online, the fact that at least 46% of jobs have been able to be sustained even in New York City during the shutdown, Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all indicators that our education system as is needs to change. So there's a lot of excitement and anticipation about what that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to families and what I see them doing at home, I see a lot more families. I just got back from a walk. I try to walk almost every day. Yeah. I see a lot more families spending time together outside. I love that. Just being family. Mm -hmm. And so for me too, I think, that's a that's a win for us. I mean, despite the pain, uh, I don't want to minimize the discomfort or tragedy of this situation at all. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at the positive that's coming out of this and the fact that families are reuniting. Families are spending time together. I've had some parents say, this is the first time that I'm getting to know my kids. Wow. That's when awesome. you're settling, yeah, because when you're constantly shuttling to school and then at extracurricular and you only have an hour or two and that hour or two at home is packed with dinner and homework, when do you really have time to get to know who your kid is? Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity and we're trying to maximize that opportunity. So with Love in a Big World, we're offering our um, free resources online with our curriculum so families can use that at home or educators if they're still teaching and connecting with their kids somehow they can take advantage of those resources um, we've also launched a new kids show called music city kids yeah. that is available online and it is um, really geared towards health and wellness so we have different segments around physical health mental health science um, music, we hear from kids and their point of view. So just trying to utilize online capabilities in order to connect with kids and also empower, empower parents during this time. And I'm not a kid and I've been watching the show and I was like, yes, I'm loving this. And, and, and I believe it's also important for us to really think innovatively on how we really make it through this time or move through this time. And, and one of the things that I've been saying to people over and over again, that after this is all over, we should not look the same. We should not act the same. We should not talk the same. We should not walk the same. We should be different. And, and I was telling someone that when I, walk, when I walk into a building that I haven't been in in a while, if I go to a, do a training with people that I haven't seen in a while, I want them to look at me and say, man, you, you different. You look different. There's something yeah. different about you. We should be looking differently if we're taking advantage of this time. A lot of times we say, we don't have a lot of time to, to, to spend with our families or we want more time praying. And then now we have that time. So what are we doing with that time? T Tamara, what is one thing that has stood out, especially with the young people that you've seen during the shows that you guys have put together? I'm seeing how incredibly creative yes. our kids are and how much joy they have. I'm questioning everything about the system right mm. now. I, I, I just, in full disclosure. Yes. So I'm looking at our kids and going, hey, maybe it's not such a bad idea that we unleash them from the institution and provide them with tools to think for themselves, provide them with opportunities to express their creativity and to let their voice be heard. Uh, maybe it's a good idea that we're giving them more time with adults who really love and care about them. Yeah. And I know that this is not the case for every child. I know that there are kids who are experiencing uh -huh. incredible hardship and, and perhaps are even in danger. Yeah. However, I'm wondering if we can flip the system, maybe we can better serve even those in need. Uh -huh. I agree with you. I do think that there are some children, if they're at home with parents that are struggling themselves to really understand even the homework or the assignments, how do we support those families? How can we be creative? 
and pairing families together. I'm just thinking outside of the box saying, how can we uh, really meet the needs of all children? And look, this is opportunity for us to look really, you know, be innovative about how we're serving families. One of the things that I have been doing this, this year is I've been adjunct faculty at a university. And one of the things when everything went online, because when a, this is a private university, uh, every student that enrolls, they get a Apple computer and an mm -hmm. iPad. So they knew that they could go online immediately because they had already given students those tools that they would need to be able to do it. And I think it's time for schools to look at that and look at who has access to Wi-Fi and all of those things. Because we did run into some issues with kids that live in rural areas that they were having, they were struggling with Wi-Fi connections. So this is opportunities for us to begin to look at those things. And I agree with you that this, is, this can be seen as a challenge or it can be seen as an opportunity. And I think we, we, we need to think creatively on how we go from here after, after this is over. Thank you so much, Tamara, for sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicole, I want to come to you next and really just talk about, even as a business owner, as a personal trainer, mm -hmm. how have you adapted to really continue to, to serve your clients and, and to even look at how do you bring in new clients? And then what, what are you doing with your kids at home and what can families be doing as a family at home? Absolutely. So um, as a personal trainer, of course, my gym is closed that I work at uh, full time. So my desire is really to make sure that health and fitness is available to everyone, no matter what. So before this, I had thought about doing live trainings on Zoom, but I have to tell you, I was a little nervous because I like to be hands on. Yeah. I felt like that may not be the best platform for people to really feel my energy and for me to really uh, be hands on. But this was the perfect time for me to get past that fear and just figure out how to translate my feelings uh -huh. to them in a way that resonates with them. And um, so I just started offering free classes. I know that I'm without a job right now, but I thought even though um, I could still provide a service to people for free and blessings will come when they come. Um, I didn't want anyone to feel like they could not um, work out because they couldn't afford it. So um, my goal was just to um, do the Zoom classes. I'm doing two a week right now. And I have been pleasantly surprised with the people that show up. It's allowed me to meet people outside of my regular um, community. Um, I have people in Texas, you know, just all over awesome. the United States joining in. And I love it because I've been able to uh, reach out to beginners who are just learning and felt like, which is very important because if you're on the couch, and you're not doing anything in your home, the beginner person is the person that I'm looking at the hardest because you're not moving naturally and now you're stuck at home. So I've been and able to eating more. Them. Yeah, and eating more. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and then I also have kind of set it up where even my uh, beast mode people can get in. So I make sure that each workout, I do several modifications across the board so nobody feels like they're left out. Um, it's been very important for me to kind of provide that. Um, I have four kids. Um, one is out of college, two are sophomores in college, and one is a uh, middle schooler. So three of them are at home. Um, so I've had to adjust a lot to them being back home. My college students work out on their own. We have a home gym. My daughter, she works out, but I've been trying to get her to kind of work out with me, and this has been great because she wants to work out and we're also we're actually going to do a free mom daughter zoom class. oh i love so, that yeah um, i'm adding that in because she's a teenager you know sometimes it's hard to connect with your teenage daughters sometimes so i thought this would be a great opportunity for our moms and daughters to work out together working on physical fitness but also just working on that connection you know you don't always have to actually be talking to connect but when you're working out, I found that you create a community where you're encouraging each other naturally. Yes. So if moms and daughters kind of learn to encourage each other in that, I'm hoping that it will expand to other things. So she's creating por a portion of the workout with me. So we're learning to work together to That's create this great. workout. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do my, we're going to do our first one next week. And I'm hoping that it'll kind of open some more doors to communication and healthy living for moms and daughters. Um, as far as people being at home, 
thinking about what you're eating. I don't know about you guys, but I've had to cook a whole lot more than I'm used to. Um, I like the healthy restaurants when I go out, but being home has really forced me to think more about what are we snacking on? What time are we waking up to eat? What are we doing? How can we eat in a way that's not totally restrictive to my kids either? I want them to feel like healthy eating is something that is beneficial to them and not a chore or something that they hate. So what we, um, what we did when we first started eating healthy, even before the quarantine, we did not change everything. We changed one or two things at a time and we did it for weeks to months at a time. So the first thing we did was we didn't drink sodas. We substituted the soda for water. And we did that for a period of time. They still got all the other junk that they wanted. I got the junk I wanted, mm -hmm. but we took our time. Um, then we went to milk, um, reducing the type of milk that we um, had. Then we went to buying less chips. So if you're buying, if we had, we're a family of six, if you're buying six different bags of chips, it can last for a long time. So we went to buying one bag of chips. When it's gone, the snack choices have to change. So if it's not in the house, you're not going to eat as much. Yeah. So just being really slow and consistent because it's something you want to do for a lifetime, mm -hmm. not just for a month at a time. Yeah. Um, another thing that we do is thinking about what's a vegetable that you haven't tried. So we would go to the store at that time and just have a kid pick out something that we've never tried before. You know, some people have never tried broccoli. I mean, you know, whatever it is for you, yeah. um, try something new, find a recipe. If you hate it, you know that that's not for you, but pick something else. So just being a little bit adventurous in your shopping. Um, and then my goal is to make eating fun, still enjoyable. So I know there's some things that I'm never going to give up. I love dark chocolate brownies. If I could never have one again, life wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> so exactly. I'm gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna have dark chocolate brownies. I'm just not gonna have them every day. So yeah. just kind of moderating how you um, how you do that. If you have little ones at home, like toddlers, now is a great time when you wake up for breakfast, not to do the pop tarts, not to do the um, sugary cereals, but kind of start gearing them towards. We want to get something that's going to energize us for the rest of the day. We want to start our day off good and just kind of talking to them in ways that they know that food is, food is fuel and not just something that has to be sugary and tasty. So just kind of saying, you know, telling them why you're eating eggs for protein, why, you're, why we're getting a piece of toast for some carbohydrates, why we need juices and waters. So instead of making it a chore, just kind of educating them, them on what it's doing to their bodies. That's good. Um, and then being on a, if you find like us, people want to eat all day long, you know, because they're at home. <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh, I'm bored. So I'm going to eat instead of I'm bored. Let me find something creative to do. So set a timer, you know, if, if that'll help. Set an alarm and let your kids know when the alarm goes off, this is when we're having breakfast. When the alarm goes off, this is when we're going to have a snack. You know, when the alarm goes off, it's lunchtime. So just making it so they're not they kind of get in the pattern of when these things are going to happen instead of just um, feeling like if I'm bored, I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. um, so just being creative and then finding snacks that everybody likes. Try different things. Do it. Let it be a day that we're doing a Google search together. Let's Google search some fun, healthy um, snacks and make it a team effort so it's not just like mom or dad forcing the snack on you that you don't want to try. And then let them make the snack with you. So everybody's invested, everyone's involved. If you're not home, once we get out of this quarantine and they have babysitters, they know what that healthy snack looks like. They know how to make it. They know how to prepare it for themselves. So it's not something new to them. So this is a great time to invest in new skills that they can use once we kind of go back to some of our normal. Right. <laughs> some of our normal, not all of it. Yes. Uh, and then the last thing, I just want to encourage people to work out with their families. If you're not joining in on those Zoom calls or if you don't know what to do when working out, it's not that hard. Think about gym class. You did jumping jacks, you did crunches, you did push-ups. It does, it's not rocket science, I promise. It doesn't have to be major. If you're taking a walk in your neighborhood, um, walk to the stop sign at the end of the street. When you get to that stop sign, do some jumping jacks, do some push-ups. Walk to the next stop sign, do some lunges. Um, Google is great. You can find different exercises that you can do. Just make it fun. You know, it doesn't have to be a chore. When you're watching TV with your kids, 
say every commercial, you pick out the exercise we're gonna do. They may do jumping jacks, they may do whatever the kid picks, but make it fun and inviting and exciting. Mm -hmm. so, those would be some of my tips. Yeah, <laughs> great, great. Thank you, Nicole. Adonis. Yes. Uh, you know, we've done some things together before. I've watched just how God has really used you in, in different spheres of influence, whether yeah. it's business, education, and the church. So share with us what, you, what you're seeing and what you're feeling and, and how you would like to really encourage and motivate people at this time. And then what, what are you and your family, how are you guys surviving? What are you doing to survive this time? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll back up to... Uh... You know, some of the thoughts I had when all of this initially took place and like a lot of business owners or people that travel and you depend on getting out and flying out to different yes. meetings and things like that. I remember wrapping up my last meeting uh, mid-March. I was in Alabama, took a team member with me. Uh, we were wrapping that up and they were telling us, man, you know, our, our state finally shut down all the schools and of course churches started shutting down. So I'm looking at both of my streams like, whoa, wait a minute. I've, I'm in the church arena, educational arena. Uh, all of that began to shut down. And I remember it was a three hour drive back from Alabama. And so I've got my team member with me. We're just kind of talking. And then I dropped him off at home and I called my wife and I said, hey, uh, you know, things are probably about to start shutting down. I'm going to swing by the uh, grocery store, pick up a few things. And uh, in the middle of the grocery store, an idea popped into my head. And as I think about that, because, you know, our minds can be just inundated with fear. And I call this my little mind monster that I take with me. And, and when this thing hit, that mind monster sits on your shoulder and starts telling you, man, there, there goes your income, there goes your livelihood, it's over for you. And, you know, I didn't focus on the fear, I focused on the idea that popped into my head. And if that's one thought I can give to people, especially during this uncertain season, I believe a lot of great ideas are birthed in yes. uncertain seasons. Yes. I can encourage people, if there's some ideas popping into your head this season, you got to pay attention to those. Okay, you got to give some thought to those. Don't focus on the fear. And this may be that time where you've got to check out from a lot of media. Let's be honest. Yes. Okay? Uh, a lot of media that's just, can be fear driven at times. And I tell people do less of what's causing stress. So yes, you find yes. yourself watching a news report and after that you're in fear and stressed out, well then that's an indicator. Maybe you need less of that. Okay. Uh, do less of going on social media and arguing with people. We're in a, guys, we're in a time where nobody is going to agree a hundred percent. Let's be real. There's people looking at this whole stay at home order in different perceptions. Okay. So let's quit arguing. Let's get the fear out. Let's focus on the idea that has popped into our head, popped into our spirit. And I remember going through the grocery store and just as plain as day had this thought, this idea pop into my spirit. And so that didn't allow me to focus on fear. I said, okay, hmm. Okay. I think that's a God idea. This is, and I just felt the urgency, hey, to start putting some of my stuff uh, in a digital uh, package quickly. Yeah. And I remember calling some of my team members and said, hey guys, no clients have called me yet, but I just got this thought that we need to prepare. And let's start putting some of our stuff, uh, on, you know, we were thinking about students. So some quick two to three minute videos that motivate them, keep them connected, keep them moving forward during this season. And we just started running with that idea and probably two weeks after that, started getting the phone calls from clients reaching out. Hey, Adonis, just we're kind of having a brainstorm meeting and just wondering what can we do to keep our students engaged and motivated during this time. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I had focused on the fear, I wouldn't be ready with the idea to hand yeah. it to somebody. So I encourage people once again, in this time, ideas pop into your head. Let's, let's put, you got all the time in the world <laughs> right now. Let's put some time focusing on those ideas because when we come out of this, and I took some notes as you ladies were talking, but I am a firm believer. I've been saying this since day one. Everybody wants to rush back to normal, but we need to figure out what part of normal is not necessary anymore. Right. Okay. Exactly. What is our normal going to look like? And I encourage family members to, to not try to put your normal on somebody else, but this is, you know, going back, putting on my church hat right now. 
but going back to the arena, you, you remember when, when Joshua uh, was talking to the children of Israel and they were going through a very uncertain season. You remember they had just came out of a season where they, they got beat by this army that they should have conquered. And they're wondering, okay, what's going on? And he takes them on this whole journey of how there's been times where you were close to God and things were going good. Then you would kind of slip away and, and we got into this teeter-totter mode. But I remember what Joshua said. He said, this day you choose for yourself. He took his family. I can even imagine them standing on the, 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 the gateway of their, their tent, whatever that was. But he said, he said, you choose this day whom you're going to serve. He didn't demand them. He said, whatever you, you choose it. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I like to take that from the, from the spiritual component to the practical, okay? You choose how you're going to respond to this pandemic. You choose how you're going to respond to the education system. But as for me and my house, this is what we're going to do. And I think people have to take authority to each individual family and it's important to have those conversations with your family, with your spouse, you know, as you talk about what we're doing at home, uh, because not every husband and wife is at home with their children. Right. It, my wife is still going in mm -hmm. nine to five and coming back. So, so those worlds look different. Yes. A part of her world still looks normal. Okay. But then on her drive in, she's looking around and she knows it's not normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm here with the kids trying to still work with my clients online and still help my kids. And I remember, you know, the first couple of days, I'm like, man, we're going to have this rigid schedule. These kids, you're going to get up at this time. Because at the end of the day, it's like school systems are sending us all kinds of resources. As if to think our kids are going to be on a computer for eight hours a day. When's the last time you got inundated in the middle of a pandemic? with all these homework assignments, okay? Our kids are not gonna do that. So mm -hmm. in about two days, that little schedule just went out the window. <laughs> it just went out the window. And so I tell people, listen, give yourself flexibility, okay? So our day-to-day -day looks different every single day because the last thing you wanna do is get stuck in a rut of a routine mm -hmm. because nobody likes routine and that's gonna get uh, old real fast, real quick. And so our days now, it's like, if our kids are sleeping in, that's good for me because I can get some video editing done. I'm, I'm, I'm on Zoom meetings, you know. By the time they wake up, they've learned a new term, brunch, okay? <laughs> they know. They know Excellent. what brunch I love time is. So, <laughs> so they'll wake up, we'll do brunch. By then, I'm wrapping up some of my meetings and, and, and work details uh, for the first part of the day. Then we may go on a bike ride together. You know, so we've done a lot of bike rides, I tell you. <laughs> and by That's the time true. my wife gets home, uh, she's a, she's a, she loves to cook. And if you know my wife, you know she loves to cook. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's her therapy. So she's done some baking today that we're about to take some baked goods and to deliver them on the uh, front, porch, uh, front porch of some friends' houses. And just to, uh, you know, and we're doing that as a family as well. The kids will get in there and they'll help her and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, we've done a lot of puzzles together, okay? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so then, Nicole, I see you going, yeah. And yes. so with that, our, once again, our day-to-day -day looks different. And I don't feel bad if we go a whole day without kids going online and doing something, you know? The other day I was in a, doing a Zoom meeting with some clients and my kids woke up a little bit earlier than I thought they would. So they came down with their little racetrack and they set it up on the kitchen island. <laughs> they had it going over pots and pans that were sitting there drying. And at the end of my conference, I looked at that and I said, I said, they just constructed a racetrack. I said, that's engineering school. Right. And class is over now. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So it's those little things that I, I begin to implement in there that I don't feel the stress mm -hmm. of looking at all these emails that I'm getting from school system thinking I've got to kind of do all that. Now, there are some things that we, we focus on, but that's a focused time. Mm -hmm. You know, during that time, hey, you really got to get this done. Let's focus on that. But as parents, we pick times where we're sitting next to them, helping them go through that together. But it's never an all day Oh, you got to get that done. You got to get that done. And so we want them to, to realize too, that, that we, we are trying to create a stress-free environment. Mm 
-hmm. And that's what we want to do. And, and there's times where we've got to have those heart to hearts. Uh, you know, my little girl's very social. And she was going through a season where she was looking outside and seeing some of her friends and they're, you know, they're waving at each other from a distance. And so she didn't take that too well, you know, but they've learned how to go online and Zoom. So we schedule Zooms where they can sit there with their friends and, and talk via Zoom. So it's, it's being creative, you know, and, but at the end of the day, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm still asking those personal questions. What, when all this is over, and I, and I, and I definitely agree, uh, Yolanda, it's, we shouldn't go back to looking the way everything was. If, if, if we do that, we've missed it. Yes. We've missed a very corrective moment. We've, we've missed it. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm still trying to design and ask questions. What is that going to look like for me yes. and my family? What is that going to look like? Because prior to all of this hitting, uh, I spent the first quarter, I was on so many trips. And I remember I counted one time, man, I, I was, uh, gone for a little over a week. And it's like, I was on six planes, three hotels, three rental cars, all, all in one trip, you know, <laughs> different cities. And, and it got to the point, my little girl was like, daddy, I'm going to lock you up. You, you just can't go anymore. You know, <laughs> and that's first quarter. So I'm taking all that into consideration. Yeah. You know, although I love, you know, going out, traveling, meeting and connecting with people. I love my family more than that. And that was, you know, real quick. I learned first quarter, Hotels are very lonely. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of sitting there, you know, after you, you're there for a two, three day stretch, you're just you're done with your meeting, you're done. And me, it's like, I do my meeting and I'm going back to the hotel. That's the safest place for me to be right. <laughs> like them. But it's like, okay, what part of that is necessary? And what part with some of the new ideas that, that I believe God has given me and I'm working on, what part of that is going to carry on over into post Corona? So that's where my mind is. And I encourage people, be thinking post-corona. What do you want your life to look like? What do you want your family to look like? The other day, I walked through our neighborhood. And, you know, they got these competitions where they were writing uh, with chalk on the, on, the, on the sidewalk. And everybody was posting pictures in my neighborhood. Like, look at, I'm like, I grew up in a neighborhood where that was, that was normal. Right. That was every day. That was, nobody had to go online, send out an invitation, and say, right. hey, let's everybody go out and paint. No, we just did that. Yes. And I'm thinking, so what part of that needs to come back yes. into our world? Mm -hmm. You know, bike rides were normal. Walks together as a family after dinner, that was normal. Mm -hmm. You know? And the last thing I'll share with you, you know, we left all of our, our schedule activities on our calendar. So it's like the other day something popped up and I'm looking, man, look how busy we would have been in the midst of all this. Now, I'm not saying all that's bad, but it it allows us, or at least really me, to well. look at that and like, okay, yeah. is that really is the norm or is that something society has created and, and we're just, you know, really overloaded with activities that are important, but let's look at the value. What is it doing for our family overall? And so that's what I encourage people to do. I hope that blesses somebody out there and helps somebody out there. Absolutely. That was so good. And, and one of the things I, I, I do a lot of calls with individuals that are business owners, but also maybe living alone. Mm -hmm. And they're in the home by themselves. And, and one of the things that I have really recommended to them is a schedule. Not my schedule, but yeah. your schedule. Mm -hmm. But being consistent and staying connected. I've done coffee connects. Yeah. I've done like coffee meetups with, with <laughs> people in business just to stay in communication and connected yeah. to people. Because I, I, I tell people I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of introvert and extrovert. I'm like, in the, sometimes I just, I could be home and I'm good. Sometimes I need to get out and do some stuff. But staying isolation, the enemy can use isolation. It can be good and it can be bad. And so I encourage them to really have a schedule, have something planned for that day, whether it's a walk, whether it's connecting online with people, looking innovatively at your business. I've come up with some God is, I get up every month like, Lord, what's going to look different in my business after this? Yeah. yeah. And I've got, Adonis is saying that I've gotten some really creative things that I'm working on mm -hmm. that I'm going to roll out. And some of it I'm already doing. Clients that I thought never would do anything online with me because I was flying to them, I had to cancel 10 travel dates 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking <laughs> days. All of that's canceled. And I've been surprised at the companies that have gotten comfortable with online that was like against it. Now yeah. they're seeing the benefits. So I think it's going to be some great things. It, also with universities, they've always said to me, freshmen don't do well online. They could never do online. We're not going to do online for freshmen coming into the university setting. Now they see differently. Now some of them don't like it, but they see that it's doable. It's do yeah, very, it, it, very. All of my students say it's more work. I'm like, yeah, it is. And my seniors are getting ready to graduate. I said, just get it done. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna do this. You're gonna get. You're gonna graduate and move on. But I yeah. think some of the things that we're seeing that works is going to. We're gonna see more of that. I think so. And to be able to continue to people that they have laid off. I see it as a workforce kind of thing too. So looking at that, but what would you guys, what is one thing before we close that you would say to someone that's living alone? They're, they're in the home by themselves. What is one thing that you would tell them uh, to just encourage them during this time? Anybody I'll go ahead and answer that real quick. <laughs> I, I, I would say, you know, definitely, you know, I like your thought of, you know, just connecting on some shape, fashion, or form, however that is, mm -hmm. uh, making sure you're staying connected to people. Uh, you know, I've, I've, we've got friends that, that are still having to go into work, so that's a part of their connection as going in mm -hmm. uh, to work with those that are, uh, you know, self-employed, they're sitting at home, and it's like, you know, when you reach out to somebody, whether that's, that's still a connection for you, whether you pick up mm -hmm. the phone and call somebody, you know, versus texting, hey, just, just calling yeah. to check on you, man, that, that's going to turn into a great conversation. Absolutely. And you're connecting with that person, you know, and versus just binge watching. I know a lot of people are doing a lot of binge watching on Netflix, and I think that's good. You know, we do it here and things like that, but it's like, you know, you know change that up. I definitely agree with the routine, but change that up. But that schedule, change it up that you're doing something different. Go out and walk around your neighborhood if you feel like it's safe to go out uh, once again. Uh, and, you know, for, you know, people that you're in relationship with, you know people that are single, that are your friends, you know, you, once again, I'll go back to what Joshua said, you know, you do what you want to do. That's for me and my house, we're going to do this. And there may be a time where you invite a single person over to your house just to, you know, if you, if, if you know them and you're like family, you had a good relationship to where, hey, I don't want you eating dinner alone tonight. Mm -hmm. Come over and eat with my family, okay? And I know that may be breaking all kind of rules, but let's be honest, people are doing that, right. okay? <laughs> people are doing that already, you know? Mm -hmm. So with that, that's where, you know, use wisdom and and follow your heart with that. But, you know, we don't want to you know, because if you're sitting at home and you've got your family with you, you can, it's easy for you not to see through the, the lenses of a single person yeah. that whether they're working or not, they're still in that house. It's quiet, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, single people just keep reaching out, reaching out. And, you know, um, yeah. That, Nicole? What... I totally agree with what you're saying. I know um, for us, we are a very social family. So um, I do have some friends that are home alone and they are working from home. So what I've done is each week I um, set up a Zoom call with that person and another friend. And we just get together, laugh, talk about our days. Um, even this week, um, we all love to read. So we're like, what's on your bookshelf? Uh, take a picture and let's talk about the books. Which one can we swap out? And so we met it. Yes, I've got that one on my bookshelf. <laughs> I have that one too. <laughs> For sure. Maybe I need to swap that one out then. <laughs> um, but we met at the tar we met at Target. And we were just like, we're all gonna swap swap out a book. You know, we didn't stay long, but it yeah. was just a way That's of still connecting idea. and sharing with each other and just making sure that everybody's okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I am such a um I like to see your, well, before all this happened, I like to hear your voice. I didn't like text messages. I wanted to hear how you sounded. Yeah. So I know if you sounded right to me. <laughs> so now at this point, I know that sometimes I can even hide how I sound to make it look okay. So I'm like, I want to see your face. Mm -hmm. Let's FaceTime, let's Zoom, let me look at you. And I'm like, okay, you look good. Just got to make sure. So just going a little bit further out of your way to connect and make sure that everybody is doing well. Even if it's like 15, 20 minute call, yeah. um, I'd say just look through your contacts. 
Yeah. Honestly, yeah. and you be that person that reaches out because not everybody's willing to reach out and just write somebody's name on your calendar. Maybe in prayer, just pray and ask God, yes. you know, who, who am I missing? Who am I maybe not thinking about? And um, reach out. It may even be a single parent who's at home with a five-year-old and they are just tired. <laughs> so if you have, even if you have a teenager who may be like, hey, can I call and read them a book on Zoom? Or what can I do? You know, maybe there's a way that they might need a little extra touch yeah. that they're not getting. Because guys, it's hard to be at home. Yes, with toddlers, even when you're yeah. when you got it together and you both parents Great are mom. Home it's and, and even know, before Corona, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's rough. You know, we are not surviving. <laughs> so you know, just being a little creative in your thought. Um, I know our family is really close, and Bella loves her cousins, and we haven't seen each other in four weeks now. Is it? So they drove into our cul-de-sac and they stood in the street and we waved and we stood in the yard and we talked because um, we would be over the limit. There's five of us in the house. There's five of them, no, six of them. So we just kind of talked in the yard and I can't tell you how refreshing it was just to see them, kind of have that conversation, still be safe. So just reach out and hey, take a Zoom, a free Zoom workout class. Family awesome. for mom. I have exactly. one on my so, Exactly. Uh, and I always leave every workout class with not just a workout because it's about the mind and your spirit. Yeah. So I always leave a thought with you or something to take you on to the next day. It's so much more than just physical. So Absolutely. reach out to those people, awesome. pray, ask God to put somebody on your heart and set a Zoom or a FaceTime call. Great. Tamara, we'll end with you. Okay, so I am, I've been a single mom for 12 years. My kids are all big, so they're 22, 17, 14, and nobody's at home. So I'm one of those single people who's, I am in isolation during this quarantine. And um, the first couple weeks, what really helped me the most was I just played worship music 24 seven. Like, and I can't tell you, um, how much of a difference that made for just shifting the atmosphere of my home. Yeah, that's And good. just being really intentional in saying, I am choosing to believe that my Father God will provide for me, He will protect me and my kids, and He will promote us through this because He is our Father and, and He is good. Mm -hmm. So I've been very intentional about um, setting that atmosphere of worship at home and then also doing what you've said, connecting. Um, my birthday was Easter Sunday. So <laughs> it was really weird to have my birthday and not be able, I mean, like that's the first time ever to not have my kids with me or any family with me on my birthday in my entire life. Yeah. But um, my family, I'm, I'm in Nashville and a lot of my, uh, and my kids are here, but my mom and dad, my aunts, Everybody, they're still in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is where I'm from. So they scheduled a Zoom birthday party for me. That's I was awesome. like, oh, they love me. I'm not by myself. <laughs> and I had so many Facebook messages, text messages, yeah. phone calls. People left some presents at my door. I mean, it was just exactly what you said, Nicole, as far as people being really intentional. Yeah. Now, I hope I'm going to say this. I hope they will not just think about it on my birthday because I'm <laughs> by myself, you know, and it's hard. Yes. But I, but the thing that I would say is that um, because I, I have made a deliberate choice, like Adonis talked about that, that as for me, I will serve the Lord. Right. And I'm going to set my mind on what is good and right and pure yeah. and just and lovely because I've aligned my spirit that way, the Lord is just giving me creativity. Absolutely. I am so busy. I mean, like I call my mom and dad every day and they're like, so what are you doing? And it's like seven, eight o'clock. I'm like, what do you think I'm doing? I'm working. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Because I, it's just this season for, for me and for what I'm about, like I'm on purpose. You yeah. know, it's almost like I feel like I've been born for such a time as this mm -hmm. and that the work of love in a big world is for such a time as this. Yeah. So I'm busier than ever. And um, and that's probably a really, really good thing for me because I am alone, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's almost like the gift of, of the work is is God's way of helping me to intentionally stay connected to people 
and keep my mind right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because if I didn't have anything yeah. going on, it would be really, really tough. And I and I'm not saying it's all been perfect because I've had days where I've woken up and I've just stood at the window and cried because I'm like, oh God, just have mercy on us. Like bring this to an end. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who um, is a worshiper and an intercessor, like I feel all of this very deeply in my spirit, like the heaviness of it. Mm -hmm. But again, that's where I've had to be very intentional about turning that all to praise. Yeah. Yeah. Turning that, you know, and making sure that I'm staying connected in prayer to the Lord, making sure I'm journaling, I'm reading the Bible. You know what I mean? Like I've got to dig in and seek that intimacy with the Lord Mm -hmm. and trust that through that. And like, like Nicole saying, and Adonis, I mean, like a lot of stuff I'm doing is for free right now, Mm -hmm. but trusting that if I'm being obedient to what the Holy Spirit is asking me to do, then it's on him to bring the increase. It's on him to bring the provision. Absolutely. 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 And I want a dog. I, and I was, was, I've heard a lot of people are getting oh dogs. Oh my gosh! Dog, 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 dog. Dog. Yes, yes, yes. I haven't gotten one yet, Yolanda. <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah. I've applied to almost every rescue in Nashville. I'm like, please just give me a dog. I'm like a touch person. I love to hug people. And I'm like, yeah. I haven't hugged anybody since March 16th. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You guys, thank you so much. I know this will be encouraging and motivating and and, and just show people how they can thrive and survive during this time. So I really appreciate you. I'll continue to cover you all in prayer. I'm spending a lot of time too, Tamara, praying. I'm an intercessor and and, and, and I think that's critical. And and, and it's it's a gift. You have to even have the time to even do that in a way that you can really go deep in in that yes. area so thank you guys for joining me i appreciate you love you guys and and thank i you. will talk with you soon thank okay. you you're welcome Bye. thank you lady you're welcome love you love you uh-huh. bye-bye